Alrighty guys, so welcome indeed to the Darkening of Trishram event. If you're looking for a very specific achievement, I'm going to have it down below in a pinned comment down below. So if you're looking to get like the cow pet or a certain like portrait, all that information will be down below. But anyways, this is the Darkening of Trishram event. We're going to go ahead and do a full playthrough. We're going to be doing it on hard as well as hardcore. I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll with the Necromancer since uh, you know it's the newest class and I think it's really cool. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, permanent death, if you die once, that's it. Anyways, so this is the new event. It only lasts this month. So if you haven't done it, uh, definitely go ahead and try it out. It's definitely pretty fun and it only, it might take about an hour to complete since I've done this multiple times. Uh, I can breeze through it relatively easy. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do it on hard. And so if you want to actually do this, just go ahead and head over to adventure mode. If you need to actually uh, unlock adventure mode, what you got to do is, of course, just complete the game, and you'll be able to get access to that. And once you have Adventure Mode unlocked, what you're going to go ahead and do is actually go visit Act 1. We're going to go ahead and make a new character. Even though I have a bunch of characters, the reason why we're going to go ahead and use a level 1 character is that is part of the achievement. So we're going to go ahead and grab the Templar here. Um, you can also put in your Paragon points, uh, for the sake of the video, just to make things a little bit faster. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put points into movement speed, but I won't put points into anything else. I'll also show you guys all the unlocks in the, uh, Darkening of Tristam event. So if you go ahead and head over to the special events, it's gonna show you exactly what you need to do. The first one is to actually kill all, all four bosses, and what it's gonna give you is the Banner Accent, as well as the Banner Sigil the Ogden Scient, and the Brew. Uh, and then, people usually don't care too much about that one, but this is pretty easy. Uh, the Butcher's on level 2, and the Skeleton King's on level 3, the Archbishop Lazarus, and the Dark Lord, you have to fight them, both of them, it's re actually required. As far as uh, killing unique monsters in Labyrinth, you might have to play the game multiple times to actually kill all of them, but once you uh, complete that, you will get a portrait frame, and I'll show you guys exactly what those all are in just a second here. And the next up, uh, thing that you're gonna have to complete is collect all the cultist pages. I'm actually just gonna put this one in the description box This one's completely random as far as getting a cultist page uh, They just spawn randomly and you can actually get the same ones, but uh, you can get it Cathedral 1, 2, 4 uh, You can also get it in uh, I believe Festering Woods and um, Also the Fields of Misery, but again, I'm gonna have all that down below But uh, what that's gonna unlock is a portrait So if you go over here, you can go ahead and change your portrait the two portraits that you can actually unlock, and again, you can only do this during January over here. But uh, anyways, this is the classic angel one, as you can see over here. And then uh, next up, we also have the demon one, which is, oh, oh, here's the, this is the angel one, and this is the demon one. This one's really cool. This is supposed to be the mana, um, but we're going to equip that one, and you guys can see over in the top left, the little icon. So that's what you can unlock uh, via this. Uh, little event thing and like I said, it, it only takes about an hour to complete I don't recommend doing it on hardcore Especially if it's your first time the next one up is to actually get Wurt's Lake and I'll show you how to do that And also visiting the dark passage chamber. Well, they're just kind of little secret areas. Uh, there's not really anything too special with that But um, this is why you actually want to do it with a level one character You're gonna be getting a pet and I'm gonna show you guys both of the pets that you can actually get with this event as well so, anyways, first off, the uh, pet. Uh, what is it under? Is it like F1? All right, so pets, the pet that you will unlock by making a level one character, and that's why I made one, uh, this is the butcher. Now there's also another pet called the royal cap that you can actually unlock as well. I'm gonna go ahead and equip the royal cap here so you guys can see it. But uh, there's also a transmog that you can actually get, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, if I, I guess I will actually have to have a helm. So here's some of the items that you can get. I'm just going to move them over here. Uh, I actually, technically, this is my second playthrough of it because the first time I did this, the audio was not loud enough. <laughs> and I done goofed it, but... Anyways, these are some of the items that you can get. They are actually classic Diablo uh, 1 items. Uh, and it's, it's just different artwork, but they don't actually have different transmogs. There is one transmog that you will get, and I'll show you guys that after we can actually equip a helm because, well, we can't transmog nothing. So let's go ahead and get started with our little event here, and uh, I'll show you guys how to actually get it. Uh, checking out the chat, I just finished watching a YouTube video, Fortnite video, nice video, you want to play some time? Yeah, we could play some time, man. 
but uh, we're going to be doing a playthrough of this first. So, anyways, you head over to the old ruins and you click on Tristram. That's how you actually begin the actual event. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, like I said, uh, we do technically have the movement speed. And it does change up the game visually, as you guys can see. It's supposed to be like Diablo 1. It works out like an 8-way di uh, directional movement. We'll, we'll show you guys all of the things that you will um, be able to do in this. There is one bug. I hope it still doesn't exist in it. Um, because I, my, when I did my first playthrough of it, I had the bug. And it makes it so you cannot get the, the cow pet. The of this place. I have long waited for this. So since it is hard, we will actually level up a little faster, but it's it's it should be pretty pretty easy. Um, but since I bump up the volume, you guys in chat, let me know if it's too loud or not loud enough. I feel like it's probably too loud, isn't it? I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the sound just a little bit here, but uh, we'll have the effects uh, a little bit reduced just because the effect volume in this game. Um, I find it to be a little bit louder than it needs to be. So we have Bone Spear now, and then uh, level 6 is where Necromancer becomes no very longer. strong. But I could slam all my Paragon points right now, but uh, I'm just going to use the movement speed one. There's a lot of areas, uh, since we will be exploring a little bit, and I'll show you guys some of the secrets. It's just going to make the playthrough a little bit more enjoyable, uh, I feel like. But it's not going to be like super OP. This world can abide you no longer. Technically we can dodge stuff, but on Diablo, uh, which is the final boss of course. Well. Because this is, is kind of supposed to be Diablo 1 recreated in Diablo 3. And um, oh, we're finding our corpse explosion. This is actually huge. Maybe we can just corpse explosion to corpse explosion. Uh, so in Diablo 2, corpse explosion was insanely good because it scaled All off of... The, the cycle. Uh, monsters are uh, HP and it, it just scaled very very well especially on a lot of the private Diablo servers I'm actually really hyped up about the new meeting XL uh, patch that's coming out on the 19th of this month so if you guys are into D2 definitely subscribe to the channel I'll be uploading a lot of D2 content very soon uh, that'll be on the 19th but um, and yeah, I was just kind of itching to play Diablo, and I did the event, like I said, I recorded one. And, uh, it just happened to be to, uh, well, my voice was a lot louder than the in-game audio, so I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and reshoot the video. Uh, we actually did get a really good item, uh, specifically the Circle of Neluge, which is actually really good. We're also playing, like I said, in Hardcore, so, um, if we die once, that's it. There's, there's no respondent in this game uh, in hardcore. You die once, it's a ripperoni. Alright, so we're gonna get some shoes. I, I'm not actually gonna use any of the items we picked up. I just wanted to showcase off. Well, this is actually old. But I just want to showcase off some of the skins. Uh, but we will actually get the Butcher's Cleaver as well. Uh, so we're on level 2 now. So important uh, thing to actually uh, pay attention to is once you hit level 2 uh, of the dungeon, you'll see over in the top right what level we are on. Make sure you visit the butcher. He's kind of hard to miss, but you know, just in case. I forgot to mention it. We're actually running kind of low in life. This thing is really hard on this aggro. We're already on level two, and we are currently level five. So yeah, hopefully we can hit six before fighting the butcher because those skeletons that we can summon are going to be a huge threshold. I almost want to say Necromancer might be one of the best classes after you are able to get the uh, the skeletons. Like it just makes it so much smoother. Weakness consumed. Yeah. You. Also, corpse explosion is insanely good. And yeah, Necromancer is still a really strong class. But going into the next season of Diablo, I really want to play Lama Wizard. Oh, there we me. go. Is it level six? We get the. Uh, I thought it was level six is where we got the. Oh, nine. Okay. Nice. So we got Templar's got a skill. Let's go ahead and have the Templar heal us after. Okay, there we go. And corpse explosion and corpse explosion. Oh, corpse explosion is so great, dude. It really is. We're just breezing through this content. I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I might want to cube this because I don't think I have this on hardcore. Um, I might not have some of these, but I just want to show you guys what they actually look like um, As far as like the things that you could be on the lookout for 
don't know if any of these items are new, but... Godly Plate of the Whale is also in the game. That was an item that actually doesn't exist in Diablo 1, um, but people hacked it to be in the game, if that makes any sense. This was something new that we got, because I didn't uh, have that before. Easy clap. Oh, this is going to be pretty easy, but like I said, this is hardcore, so at any moment we could die, and then that's it. There's, there's no coming back. Which is uh, obviously not good for a playthrough, but you know, to make it more entertaining, more exciting for me, um, I, I am playing it on this this mode. Uh, like I said, on, on Diablo, the butcher, uh, I believe he just charges anyways. But specifically on Diablo, I will turn off the movement speed buff because theoretically, the yeah, lightning breath does do a lot of damage, and with additional movement speed, it's easier to dodge. But it really isn't a huge deal. Dang, dude, we don't have the skeletons on this one. Uh, this is a little risky, I'm not gonna lie. Oh gosh, we'll be here for a while, boys. Should probably come back at a different uh, level. Right. But he's pretty easy to dodge, anyways. And also, since I have the Templar, it makes it quite easier. So, in, uh,. Vanilla like Diablo 1. Butcher was actually pretty scary. This guy looks a little bit more like friendly, I'll be honest. But like as soon as you see him goes, oh fresh meat, you can see all these people that are impaled. Like Diablo 1 was probably the darkest, if not the darkest Diablo game. Diablo 2 has a lot of dark moments, but Diablo 1 is like spooky. Spooky dark. But like you can see all the people impaled, their intestines are coming out. Like it's cool, dude. Look at it. Like I love it. I love that. That's a new be able to beat this guy really easy. Just using the Templar. Good stuff. I guess the movement speed kind of helps me kite better. But I promise you we'll be able to kill him. No problem. So we just got the Butcher's Cleaver. Unfortunately, it's not going to give us extra damage. It will give us extra intelligence. But it, because the flat damage is just too small, we're not going to equip it. But I'll equip it just for the sake of showing you guys what it looks like. So, like I said, the uh, Transmox. Oh, you can't actually zoom in on this. Normally, like, you can zoom in Diablo 3, but... Here's what it looks like. You can see, oh, um, the tr oh I, can't, I can't show you the transmog because I didn't uh, put it in there. But I'll show you guys it like when we go back on the town in like HQ. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and equip this for now. So you can go ahead and get that as well. And there, like I said, there's a helm transmog, uh, but we'll have to of course acquire the item for that. But hello Johnny, how's it going? But yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna breeze through this. Uh, what are we, 12 minutes in, we're at level three, okay. But I was also explaining a lot of the things and showcasing some of the content here. I'll go ahead and grab this, this would be nice. But yeah, once we hit level, uh, level nine, oh, it's gonna be easy peasy, man. I wanna see if we got the thing that lets you stun the enemies, cause that makes it a lot easier to control. So, kill these enemies real quick, and then go into our skills. So, Bone Spikes will get Sudden Impact, and Corpse Lance is actually pretty good too. It's actually one of the, like, the highest damaging uh, skills for like a long time. It deals 350% weapon damage. So, okay, like I mentioned before, important levels 2 and 3. Oh, let's go ahead and kill this, this person as they leave. Corpse explosion is so great. I'm just gonna wait for them We're close by. There we go, level nine, huge. King Sword of Haste, awesome. It's gonna actually give us movement speed. Oh, okay. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't roll very good. That axe is still a lot stronger, okay. So here's how you access King Lark Tombs. This is another boss, another skill slot, which is of course the skeletons. So this is, uh, again, another important area that you wanna check out for, of course, getting your achievements done. We actually have it at 100%. Let's see if this is this is going to be better. So in Diablo 1, there's actually no you Necromancer. The the there is the Skeleton King boss. You down, so yeah, we're, we're going to be killing all of the bosses. Well, I should say major bosses. Because seeing every enemy probably won't happen on one playthrough. Watch out for that. That does some damage. 
but it's still relatively easy, even on hard, like it's easy peasy. Let's see if we can draw some more aggro. So we get more corpses over here for a corpse explosion. There we go, level 10. Got the undead crown. Oh, that'll be perfect for later on. And we also got a passive slot. Let's go ahead and have it so we can have extra movement speed. Our Templar actually has the uh, loyalty uh, talent that we can get, which is uh, going to allow us to basically not need to pop potions for the rest of the game. But I'm doing pretty good, Johnny. Just uh, playing the new Diablo event. Really hyped about uh, the Diablo 2 expansion, honestly, more than anything. Uh, that and Devil May Cry is what I'm really excited about this year. But yeah, that's all that's in the skeleton area. Just to kill, of course, the boss. Which we already did. I guess it's kind of like a walkthrough here. So, even though this is like the down area, there's still another area that we will be accessing quite soon. Crack open up that chest. Then we're gonna open up the chest. It's definitely still worth it. A leather belt. Ooh, we got a really cool looking crown. That's also another item that uh, is not in regular Diablo 3. But again, most of them, I think maybe the Butcher's Cleaver, and I think the Wart's Leg. Um, and then, uh, of course, there's something I, sh I told you guys in the helm. We'll showcase off once we get to it. But you guys in the chat, how, how's the audio? Can you guys hear the in-game audio as well as my voice, like perfectly fine? Uh, unfortunately, we won't get any movement skills because you don't get blood rush until 30 on the necromancer. All right, so we just unlocked death nova. Can you hear me good? Okay, with the game, the game, you can hear the game volume good. Oh, we got skeleton me. Oh, let's go ahead and run Death Nova for a little bit, and then we can we can swap it up. I do have Circle of Neluge, but I, I like this a lot more. Just clears that thing. Audio is fine. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, see, so you can see his name Snot Spill. So, if we go under achievements and we're trying to do, of course, those achievements, you want to go over here and then check out all of the, uh, not only the bosses but killing the unique monsters. So you, you basically you have this little checklist and then of course you get the demon uh, portrait. I think the demon portrait is way better than the angel one because the angel one doesn't have that background, which is like a huge deal for me. I don't know, I, just, I feel like it looks better with the, the background. Looks like he's got Waller. If you guys haven't played Diablo 1, I can highly recommend that game. There's an HD mod out on it and it looks great. So. I'm sure you guys that have played Diablo uh, know what a shrine is. What's interesting is in Diablo uh, 1, shrines were actually random RNG effects, and they actually could be negative effects. They would just remove stats on your character. Um, there's crazy stuff. There's like absolutely crazy things. They would turn everything in your skill bar like you'd, oh dude, there's, you know, I almost wanna play Diablo 1 again. Like there's some crazy, crazy stuff. But what you would do is you would oh, save. The cycle. Before hitting a shrine. If it was bad, you would just load your effect. You would just go back. War Spark. Let's see if we go. Oh! This is, a, this is one of the best Glory items in the game. Developed. The Archangel Staff of Apocalypse. In... It, it was another... It was an item that basically hit everything... Almost everything on screen with the Apocalypse. Uh, Apocalypse was... I think it was only like a scroll... Uh, a scroll item. And... Uh, Oh, skills were a lot different. You know, yeah, yeah, Diablo 1 is a lot different, that's for sure. All right, we're already on level 5. So the next one up that's really important is level level 9. All right, we're going to do a corpse explosion. That's everything real fast. But yeah, Apocalypse basically just... You activate it and it would hit everything. In fact, in Diablo 1, there's so many mechanics that like are so strange. Like teleport, you actually didn't have control over... Uh, where teleport would go. How teleport worked in Diablo 1 is it would randomly teleport you to an area. It was still faster though than actually like uh, using. Uh, okay, uh, well, I've already showed you guys these things. Uh, I guess we can show up the Butcher's Cleaver again.
another Archangel Staff of Apocalypse. It's so cool that they actually have this. Normally you'd want to disenchant these, but I don't normally play hardcore Diablo anyways, and I just wanted to do the hardcore for this event. Oh, Magic Rock right here. Right, let's go ahead and kill this guy first. Yo, look at all these. Look at all these. What did we get? We got some band. So this is uh, another... Uh, well, the ring is uh, another like skin but like you can't see the rings oh my gosh this guy is just teleporting all over the place all right there we go a prime quest all right what is this call the player of the well there it is it's like one of the like i said it's the uh it's an item that doesn't actually exist in the game it just gives you insane amounts of vitality is really what it comes down to We got the Frenzy Shrine. But in Diablo 1, originally, there's three classes. There's like the Rogue slash Archer. There is the Warrior, as well as the Mage. And then later on, I was gonna, I was gonna bust it out. Um, I actually do own Hellfire, which is a Sierra expansion pack for Diablo 1. And it added a new class called the Monk. It also added oils, and you could put oils on, I believe it was like weapons. Um, however, there's an interesting thing if you didn't, uh, there's like, there's a certain way to like, oh wait, because you could reset your instances. Um, gosh, I'm trying to make this make more sense. So if I wanted to reset the game, like I wanted like to reset like the, the level, normally in this you'd leave the game and like, uh, you would have a new instance every single time. Like, if I was to go back into, like, any area, it would have all new enemies. In Diablo 1, if you killed the enemies, like, you, you killed the enemies, that was it. Unless you reset the entire, like, um... I don't know if you want to call it lobby. But, uh... It would reset some of the stuff that was saved because it was saved into the game versus saving it into the I character. Which was a huge flaw in it. Obviously, they just made a mistake on that end. You wanted to ask if I played Spellbreak. If so, I you know I have not played Spellbreak. I actually should play Spellbreak. I have the game, but uh, the game is still under NDA, which means that like I ca I can't I can't talk and share my thoughts about that game, um, which is unfortunate. I also played Anthem, but again that's another game that um, you just you can't talk about. You can't you can't stream it. I'm unable to get it. Oh, open. An unknown mechanism. All right. Almost all of them. 18. Do you have anything with deck? Okay, so 18, we get something with corpse explosion. We increase that radius. Skeleton on 15. I think it just lowers the cost of something. So, in order to access this area, you actually have to go back, and then we'll be going forward later on. Anyways. So, on level 6, there is lo 16 levels to the labyrinth. There's also different audio uh, in the game. Which is definitely pretty cool. So definitely crank up that audio. That's why I also reduced the, uh, the effect sound. I really like Diablo 1 soundtrack. That woman is great. Diablo 1 and 2. Oh, I just love their soundtrack. So, so much. Uh, okay, this is going to increase our damage. And that's going to increase our damage even more. That corpse explosion. All right, we have another active skill. Uh, I don't really care too much about decrepify, so I'm gonna see if there's anything else. This is corpse lance. That's actually not too bad. Oh, let's actually just throw command golem in there. Let's get golem. Someone on big boy. All right, so here's a mythical book. I'll let it play out. Beyond the hall of heroes lies the chamber of bone. Eternal death awaits any who would seek to steal the treasures secured within this room. So speaks the Lord of Terror, and so it is written. So Diablo 1 is actually, there's a new darkest, in my opinion. And like, they'd have these books lying around. So this area is just kind of, I'm just gonna show it off. Nothing too special, there's a chest somewhere in here. Make a fine corpse. What's that chest? There's items. And there's My master here. would take pride in this. 
extra XP, nice, nice. Templar's got a new skill. Let's go ahead and give him that charge so he can stun. And devour, great stuff. So now that we have devour, I might just get rid of explosion. Oh, we didn't even get a chest. Is it down here? I guess that's all the treasures for Kappa. No, I think also in the skeleton key room there's like a chest. I think we just killed him and walked out because I'm just, not really necessarily doing this as like a speed run, but I'm kind of going through it a little bit fast. So in case anyone wants to uh, like see the whole thing, it'll be a little bit faster. I also kind of wanted to play it. And also the new season does start up pretty soon. I think Tal Rasha's is pretty fun to run as uh, six piece bonus to get increased. It actually got nerfed from the PTI, which makes me a little bit disappointed. It, uh, it had 750% increased damage, and they changed it to 3,000. It was really good at 3, 3k. So, actually, instead of Quartz Explosion, uh, I'm going to go ahead and swap this up for Devour. So it uh, consumes the uh, the essence of nearby things. There's also a few enemies. The Acid Beasts actually work differently. You see the Acid Beasts are like Plague Fiends? But anyways, in Diablo 1, uh, interestingly enough, when you killed them, their blood, if you walked over it, you would take damage. And when it would spit out acid at you, well, I'm trying to make him spit acid, so it would drop a pool of acid on the ground. I should have, I wish they kept that in, because they were actually kind of annoying. And like, when you have these characters that are like, annoying, you remember them in games, at least that's how I feel. In Diablo 3, I felt like Waller was like the only one. Uh, Jailer used to be really annoying, but they have definitely toned down the difficulty of this game. It's, it's gotten much, much easier. I need so now we're gonna be sp spamming this, uh, whatever, do we have a, uh, a rune? Okay, 18 is when we get a rune for that. Not enough essence. not stay in that because they can get us killed. Where's the legendaries at though? We haven't gotten one. Last run we had three legendaries by the time we completed the game. But that's all it's all RNG. I cannot open this. Here we go. I can see what you see not. Vision milky then eyes rot. When you turn they will be gone. Whispering the hidden song. Then you see what cannot be. Shadows move where light should be. Out of darkness, out of mind. Cast down into the halls of the blind. Are the heroes bounce? Oh, in Diablo? Ah. I think Wizard might be one of the best right now. Oh, here's a resplendent chest. Let's see if we get anything good. Oh, we got a couple of yellows. Oh, let's see if we get any upgrades. Armor upgrade. Bracer upgrade. Let's get rid of all the, the other stuff here. I I do have some gems here. I mean, I have better gems in the stash, but because I want to keep this playthrough like a normal playthrough. This is what I got last time. I'm not gonna use it though, because I'll do like a normal playthrough. So you guys can have like kind of a similar experience here. Oh, this is a dead end. But yeah, there are clo cloaked enemies, and they would attack you and disappear. I feel like the, the, the enemies in Diablo 1 were a lot more difficult. Uh, but the game was also like a lot more slower paced. It, yeah, Diablo 1 was definitely a All difficult game. Definitely. But it's cool that they have all these things. Oh, you know what? I think all that's here in the Halls of the Blind is going to be that chest that we've already gotten. There's actually another um, area where there's like these bloodstones. It's actually a really simple thing. You just kind of click on it. And it'll give you um, Arcane's armor. It's nothing special. In Diablo 1, there are uniques. Diablo 1 actually had no set items. Diablo 2 was the first one that actually had set items. Yeah. This is why I wanted to have the movement speed, because over here, it's I just kind of want to show you guys some of like the cooler areas also in this, but you don't need to do this area at all. Is it worth it? Eh, I mean, you get a couple yellows. Maybe you get a legendary. I think um, I did get a legendary in uh, my 
like, like I said, when I first recorded this, um, that when the audio was kind of just not up to par. Corpses. Not enough essence. Damage is kind of, kind of meh and upgrades here hopefully pretty soon. We want to use that circle and Nailuge. Look how much damage it is. Five, ten percent. Okay. Gold wrap actually made my playthrough really easy. Because that increases your armor by quite a bit. Alright, so we're on level eight now. Again, level nine is where something comes out that you actually want. We're not going to bother grabbing that. Uh, uh, look at that at 20. So we're at 17 right now. Anyway, so like I mentioned before, there was no Necromancer in Diablo 1. There was two things that you can summon. One was called Guardian, and the other one was Clay Golem. Not enough essence. So Clay Golem would just wander off on its own. He didn't follow you like this golem. And then on th and then the arcane, uh, or what was it called? It was called like a guardian. It was uh, like a three. It was basically Hydra from this Diablo from D three. Let's go ahead and kill this elite over here. We get sixteen to upgrade for our Death Nova. Good. And upgrades, upgrades. Ooh, 55% damage. So that's, uh, that's a big buff. So yeah, like I said, I, I noticed our damage was lacking. But as far as the heroes being balanced, I think you can play any classes, and they're, they're relatively like balanced. Demon Hunter was like S tier for so long, so 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 long, in like vanilla. It was very very strong. In fact, Demon Hunters were kind of the only ones that could really clear things efficiently. Because they had like, they'd be, oh shoot, we're actually taking a lot of damage, gotta be careful. Because like I said, we are playing on hardcore, and if we die, that's it. There's, there's, there's no going back. And then this whole gameplay, the character, all the legendary items that we have, like, that I re removed. They're all gone. So I kind of went in a little circle here. But that is because I'm trying to sh show you guys something. Let's see if it's over here. There we go. The musty tome. Czar the Mad. Which is actually just like some of the audio from uh, Zoltan Cool. God, another godly play that was an upgraded one. Oh, that's extra damage. Sure, let's go for it. Unfortunately, the rest of the stuff is not very good. And that's gonna be it. No chest, no nothing. But that's just how Diablo is sometimes. Like, you just go to a dead end. I figured I'd show you guys one of the other like bosses. He's not like a major boss. He's not one of like the the four that you need to complete for, of course, getting the pet or the transmog, anything like that. Let's go ahead and go over here. What is this? Nature? Oh, we can't even use that. Or moving over here. Get rid of some stuff. I'll kill the elites here. Oh yeah, we also need to change the rune on this to make it even stronger, like as far as making it, that just makes it a little bit larger. All right, so labyrinth level nine. Another very important um, area to go to. Um, there's a very specific item that spawns in here. I will find it for you guys. I need essence. Ooh, hey, 
Massive amount of chunks, man. Slain hero. Dude, these guys are hitting me for a lot of my HP. Hit me for about a quarter of it. Broken storm. Good. I'm surprised we haven't gotten one legendary on this playthrough. Not even one. Alright, let's go up here. Oh, here it is. The black mushroom. So this is one of the items that you will actually need. I oh, hear this rotten mushroom. So uh, you will need this to actually get the cow pet. And I'll show you guys exactly how to get that when the time comes. Wow, dude, look at 64% increased damage. Huge damage buff. Wow. Insane. Why is it so much? Just just roll good, I guess. We're also technically like super far behind on armor. I think it's level 14. Because, uh, yeah, like I said, we are playing on hardcore, so I kind of want to be safe on that. Another thing I want to mention, the, the health and the mana icon has kind of changed, or essence, but it's called mana in Diablo um, 1. And the, the icon is similar. I just wish the mana one was actually the same, like it was a blue background, and that would make it so much cooler. Not enough essence. Yeah, unfortunately, Necromancer doesn't get any movement abilities until I'm pretty sure the first one's like Blood Rush, and then you get that at 30. There's Gold Blight. Is it a two-handed weapon? Oh, it's two-handed. That's why the damage was so high. There we go. We finally got a legendary, our first one. I think this was the Zwayhander. It's not even the Zwayhander. Huh. Gives me a lot of health. And also, how much life for it? 197. Okay, that's not bad. But because the attacks are going to be relatively slow, you have to factor that in. But it will hit pretty hard. I got feared. Oh my gosh, just from that damage, it's just melting. Uh, okay, that's 56. This is 68. But yeah, like the music you guys are hearing is from Diablo 1. I love it. I guys still listen to the Diablo 2 soundtrack from time to time. My insight grows. Twenty, I think, is when we'll get something new. Uh, okay, so we can go ahead and start putting on other things. Devour, okay. At uh, looks like 20, 23. I don't know if we'll hit twenty-three. We'll see though. Oh, we also have bone armor. It actually, won't be that bad to actually have. What else can we throw in here? Yeah, bone armor is probably not a bad thing to use since we're playing hardcore. So what bone armor does is it basically increases our armor. Um, our armor reduces damage taken by 3% per enemy hit. And it can get up, you can hit up to 10 enemies. So 30% damage reduction is actually a pretty huge deal. Especially when you're playing in hardcore. Otherwise, like, I don't even care about it. So you can hit like two enemies. And then once it like goes off cooldown, once it's cooldown, 10 seconds, you can hit it again and it'll refresh it. And it also like has a different skin over your character. So we hit it again. See now our damage is reduced by it three per per. So it's twelve percent damage reduction right now. And we're just gonna ramp it up. Sensing. We're just chunking them. Wow, dude. It's actually, I think, faster than our our, our first playthrough of this, um, like, the, this year, because I've technically played through it. Uh, the first year, I think I skipped out on the second year, because, I mean, it's the same event. It's just that, that you know, I kind of wanted to play it. And since it did come out for the Nintendo Switch, uh, you know, there's some more people that are interested in, tr like, trying to look up what is this Darkening of Tristram event. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do, like, the full event here. Except for the cult, well, I'll show you guys how to get the cultist pages on. Basically, explained it, but basically, there's there are drops from very specific enemies that you can kill, 
and um, it, it's all random though, so I can't like. Obviously, this is like more consistent here. It's like you know, randomly generated dungeon. But as far as getting the cultist pages, they are tradable. I don't think I have one on this uh, this account. But um, you just collect the cultist pages, and they are tradable. So you can play with your friends if they get an extra, uh, you know, same page. Then yeah, because there's no point of having multiple of the same pages. I need essence. Get all that essence. Death nears. Yeah, after we got this thing, it just made the game so much faster. Wait, an amulet! Finally! Oh. What's the amulet? Oh. It doesn't do anything. Uh, vitality. More intelligence is gonna give us extra damage. In Diablo uh, 1, how it worked was you would, you, you would have books, and you would read the same copy of the book to increase the damage of that spell but in this game it's more streamlined you like you just put stats into your main stat and just get more damage it's kind of how diablo 3 works and it just increases everything gosh i hope we don't have to go back anywhere <laughs> we literally went all the way around and the exit is like right here probably right here i'm hoping for another legendary pretty soon we're at 13. I must be getting close. Right. I don't know if you guys noticed, the frame rate is also reduced in this mode. But it's done so to kind of mimic so the, older, much more now. the older Sims games. so many items oh I totally forgot I can put items on my Templar it's fine I'll do it soon Kappa the armories of hell are home to the warlord of blood in his wake lay the mutilated bodies of thousands angels and man alike have been cut down to fulfill his endless sacrifices to the Dark Ones, who scream for one thing, blood. We're going to be coming up to something pretty dark soon. Um, so like games these days, well, I'll explain I guess when we get to it. I need essence. Because they actually removed it in this as well. Uh, ooh, okay. Uh, I have trained well. I put a topaz in that. I don't think it's gonna. Like Twenty-seven. And what does this give me? Ten. Uh, it's not gonna give me that. Not enough. You got a bone armor. Twenty-two. Devour. Oh yeah, we're good. I like sudden impact for that stun. Like that just like holds him to spot. All must serve the cycle. Yeah, that wayhander is pretty dang nice. Protection shrine. Scarly fez. Oh, okay. Where are the legendaries at, man? If we can go down over here. Damn, so there's a weapon rack or a chest back there. So we're at level 15. Like I said, 16 is the last one. I showed you guys the Butcher, Skeleton King, coming up. The next major boss. Those blood sores actually hit for so much. You will make a fine corpse. But in this, like, um, do, how much do they even hit for? Can I like stand in it? Right. Not enough essence. The 
it's over. Pull it back, back over here. <laughs> He's a cool character. I, I liked him. So we do have access to this, but I won't use it. Like I said, I'll also remove the uh, movement speed this on the world Diablo. can abide you no longer. Not that it really matters at all, anyways. Like I said, there's usually chests back here. You know, the bear. This is gonna be. Just cool down everything by five percent. Oh, okay. And thirty-two vitality. Not bad. Just a lot of toughness around it. Ten percent. Yeah, it's huge. So we're at the unholy art altar. So I want to see if they actually have like full nudity on the uh, My master would the succubus take pride in this. Here. The advocate. So we have to use go to these things that will teleport you. The Book of Lazarus. You will make a fine corpse. Black G. Now we're gonna go to the other side. Paladins up here, ninety minutes. Oh, what's coming out in Paladins? It's the Archbishop Lazarus, which is just. A, a reskin Zoltan. It's a lot easier than I thought. I have trained well. Ooh, level 23. Let's see if we got an upgrade here. Probably not for weapon. I don't think it's possible to get an upgrade for this weapon. We got another godly player of the whale. We got another small little upgrade. Oh, I was supposed to keep. Well, okay, we'll, we'll keep this one. And then, was there a, uh, a shield? I don't know. I'll grab that ring and give it to our Templar. This uh, will aid me. He can actually get the butchers. Oh, that's pretty awesome. You guys can see it on him now. I'm gonna give him a new shield. 143 armor, there we go. Much better. I don't think we have anything on the socket. Alright. Labyrinth level 16, guys. This is where Diablo's at. So it's actually kind of interesting how you actually get to Diablo. Your death nears. You have to pull these switches. Man. We're like basically one-shotting these things, dude. It's crazy. All right, I think this is the final one. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the Paragon points out for them. It was just movement speed that we had. Again, it just felt like it made it for a better playthrough. Oh, there's Diablo. His lightning near. breath does hit pretty hard though. I'm actually kind of curious. How much does he actually hit for? Like I said, we're playing on hard and hardcore. It's probably not a good idea to just run hardcore, but. I mean, I can let the skeletons finish it, but. I need essence. Alright. Then we get the cutscene. There we go.
What's up, man? All right, so we just completed the darkening of Tristram, and we of course get the red soul shard. Let's go pick up the items, see if Diablo dropped anything good. Let's go back to town. All right, what did we get? Absolutely nothing. We got a helm that has a socket in it, though, which is actually pretty important. So this is a transmog that's a gem, and it's called the Red Soul Shard. And what the Red Soul Shard does is you periodically struggle for control, unleashing a ring of fire that inflicts 12,500% weapon damage to enemies it passes through. And then if you rank it up by doing greater rifts, uh, after gaining a level, your resource costs are removed and cooldowns on skills are reduced by 75% for 30 seconds. It does require you to hit rank 25, but it's not that difficult. You know what, and put it in our helm. It's the only gem that you can put in the helm. And once you have it socketed, you'll see that we will actually have access to this transmog. So we're gonna go ahead and go over here and we'll go ahead and go to transmog. And here's what it looks like. It's called the red soul shard. And I guess if I hit escape, you guys can see it maybe a little bit better here. We got the cow pet, but I need to show you guys uh, how to actually get the cow pet. Oh gosh, this game looks so much more HD and stuff because, well, it is. Because the other one, I, I don't know if it runs at a lower resolution. I know the frame rate like changes, but anyways, I gotta show you guys how to get everything. So let's go ahead and go over the uh, special events. So I kill the monsters. Yeah, you just kind of go over them. If you need to know what floor that they're on, I'm just gonna link you. Uh, just again, check the pinned comment. So uh, you just kill monsters. Again, sometimes you'll have to go through it multiple times. Um, killing all the four bosses, I did show you guys where the Butcher was, which is on level two. The Skeleton King is on level three. Uh, Archers, Lazarus, Diablo, uh, AKA the Dark Lord, you will find those and that, those are the rewards you get. And then from the Labyrinth, we already have the Portrait Demon Frame. Collecting all the uh, Cultist Pages will give you the Angel one, which I actually showed you guys already. The uh, next one is to acquire Wart's Leg in the Darkening of Trishan event. So, remember that mushroom that we picked up on level 9, okay? I'm going to take that, go back to the old ruins, go all the way back here to the portal, go right back in. I'm going to go back in. Actually, I'm going to put in the movement speed here. It doesn't really matter. Like I said, it, it's a pretty easy event. Maybe I could have done it on, like, uh, Expert or something, but... I just feel like easy is too easy. Um, I, I don't know actually how difficult it even would be on like the next one. It probably won't be that difficult. But we take that again, that uh, rotten mushroom, and we go ahead and bring it over to this cauldron, which is where Aegir's hut is. You put it in, it's going to give you the witch's brew. The witch's brew is a powerful elixir, and it says, This strange concoction has been steeping for several years now. So we're going to take this. This is kind of weird. In fact, uh, it's just a fun little fact, because I don't know why, I'm just going to rant off and talk about Diablo 1, because, well, I mean, this is what the whole Darkening Tristram event is all about. In Diablo 1, you actually didn't have run. <laughs> you actually got run in D2. But there was a stamina system, but eh, it's fine. Um, in D3, I'm, I'm glad they removed the stamina bar, though, honestly. So here's Farnham's Corpse. Click on that, and that's going to give you the Drunkard's Debt. And the Drunkard's Debt says, Money owed, this was all the treasure farm had left, which he had hoped to use to keep his favorite place in business. So you take that, go ahead and go to the Ogden's corpse, and then here's Garda's letter. It says, letter, a heartfelt letter from Ogden's wife to the healer of Tristram. It regards the fate of Kanas's child. Take that over to Pepin, aka the healer. You get the healer's prescription. It says, Pepin's detailed schematics for a child's wooden leg. You take that over to Griswold, and Griswold will be right here, and he will give you, oh, you know what, okay, just, okay, you know what, since we've already done it, it drops you the plans to actually craft the leg, so I can't actually show you that because I've technically already done it, yeah, it won't let me do it, uh, but yeah, you just do that, and it'll give you the plans, so what you'll do is take those plans, Take it over to um, Hadrig. You will go to craft weapons. And it will be under a mace over here. I know my cam is kind of blocking it, but it's uh, over at the top. It's called Wart's Leg, and it does cost 1 million gold to do. You're going to go ahead and actually craft that. 
and then you'll see the wart's leg. Let's go ahead and also check that out. And this is how you get the pet cow. So here is, of course, wart's leg. Not all right, but we're of course here to get the petty. And so what you're gonna do with this, and um, I hope they fix this glitch, but what you do with this is actually you salvage wart's leg and, okay, and it will give you the map of the stars. And it says, you probably weren't supposed to find this old map, because it's kind of like a hidden secret thing. It appears to have a hoof print stamped on it and the numbers 213. So what you're going to go ahead and do is go back into the old ruins. Like, some of the stuff is just like, whoa, man. Like, you would have had to have just known, right? So you go back to Tristram. You're going to go over here. You're going to go back to kind of where Adria's um, hut was. And you have to do it in the, the specific order that they give you, which is 2-1-3. Two, one, two, one, uh, if you do not do it in the correct order, you have to leave the game and re reopen up a new game. You don't have to complete everything all over again, but just, yeah. Anyways, so the, uh, uh, the passcode is 2-1-3. Okay, cool. They, they actually patched the glitch because, like I said, the first time it, it did... It just didn't work. So you go to the abandoned farmstead. You're gonna go ahead and go on in. You can't actually do anything to the cows, but the scarecrow. A scythe. And over here we got work stash. You click on it, and it's just gonna give us gold. Now it normally gives you the cow pet, but we've already forgot the, the cow pet. But just to show off the rest of this area, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go on a little tour, checking out those cows. But, yes, that is how you get the cow pet. And we're going to go ahead and, like I said, just go around there. There's really nothing here that I'm aware of, unless there's another secret. I wish they added on to this uh, event every single time. It would be quite cool to see what else they uh, could do with it, but I'm sure that they're focused on the multiple other Diablo projects that they're working on. Alright, so now that we've shown off that one, uh, going back to the achievements, because this is kind of going over like the 100% of all the achievements. So I showed you guys how to acquire Wurt's Leg. As far as the Dark Passage and the Chamber of Bona, again, I'll have those linked on exactly what levels those are on. Um, but uh, yeah, you just basically go to those other areas. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and then the Halls of the uh, Blind X is the one I actually showed you guys already, which was the, the blind area, I believe. And then uh, this one, you just get the little butcher pet, and you create a game with a level one character. Oh, it also has to be the solo, uh, a, a solo game to actually do that. But now that we've completed everything, uh, yeah, that is what is in the Darkening of Tristram event. I hope this little video guide helped you out. Oh, you know what? I, di I didn't show you technically. So, this is random, okay. But, in the Cathedrals 1, uh, one 2, and 4, you can find um, the cultists that you kill. I I'm going to go ahead and just kill at least one. Let's go ahead and go to the Halls of Agni. This is also another area that My could technically uh, have what we the need. Beckons. So what we're looking for is... Let me go ahead and just... Oh, I can't lower the difficulty. I just wanted to do this so I can do this a little faster. What you're looking for is these other uh, cultists. They don't look like normal ones over here. Uh, these are dark cultists. But you'll see different ones. They're basically reskins. Oh! Also, I wanted to explain Glory. this. Um, it just activated. But when you see that there's a ring of fire that goes around us, that's this activating. Probably should have mentioned that, because the, the gem actually does something. <laughs> this is a meme tutorial. No, a 10 out of 10 IGN tutorial. Alright, here's the dark summoners. So we're just going to kill those. But they basically look like that. I will kill at least one. They are random, just as a heads up. Oh, here's, a, here, here's the effect, and it's... Oh, well, didn't, didn't go very far. But we'll at least kill one group so you guys can see what they look like. Actually, I'm wondering if, after you complete the event, if they even spawn in. 
they might not actually spawn in after I've, I've already completed it. Because I want to say they should have been here. But they basically look like that, and they're... They're black and white. Uh, and like I said, I want to say that since we've already done it, they might not actually spawn in. Because, like, they should just... They should this just be there. Can abide you no longer. Oh, wait, here it is. The temporal... Okay, here it is. Here it is. The cultist page 5. So you collect all of the cultist pages. I'm glad we actually got one. So, um, they usually will drop one. I don't think they can drop none, but I'm pretty sure they'll always drop one page. It's totally random, but they are tradable. So you can hit up your friends and say, hey, I got this one. Do you have this one? Or do whatever. Share them. And that is uh, how you get the last uh, one of the uh, achievements, which is, of course, um, collect all of the cultist pages. Uh, again, there are certain areas. I will leave that down below, again, in the pinned comments. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the entirety of the event, killing all the bosses and showing you guys what to actually do to get all of the little pets and all of the, uh, tr the other transmogs and everything for, of course, the event. There's that thing activating again. But anyways, let me know your thoughts on the event. Did you guys like it? I personally thought it was really cool. I really like Diablo 1. There's a lot of cool nostalgic things in there. There's one other thing with uh, Arcane's Valor. It's not part of an achievement, but it is something that is kind of cool, where you basically put these little stones in, and you get his armor. But the armor, it, it, it unfortunately doesn't do anything. I really wish that some of these things had unique uh, effects, but I think that they didn't want it to be uh, something that requires you to go through the event otherwise you couldn't like progress in the game because this thing is kind of cool it actually at one point was meta in uh greater risk what people would do uh with the ability it says after getting a level your resource costs are removed and cooldowns are uh, on skills are reduced by 75 percent for 30 seconds and that actually did stack. So people will create a level 1, have someone power level them to 70, and they would just slam into greater rifts, and just for like a short amount of time, they would have 75% cooldown reduction, as well as uh, no resource cost, which is actually a pretty big deal. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, be on the lookout very soon on, Diablo, uh, on the 19th. Diablo uh, 2 content will be uploading very soon on this channel. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Peace out. Have a good one. I'm out.